Hello everyone. My name is Dr. Akash Patel. I am a former orthodontic resident at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver, Canada. I am currently practicing as an orthodontist in Visalia, California. Today, I would like to share with you a case treated under the supervision of Dr. Bing Shuang Zhou during my residency. The patient was a 14 and a half years old female presented to the graduate orthodontic clinic for orthodontic treatment. She was referred by her general dentist for appropriate treatment of impacted left mandibular second and third molars. In addition to that, patient's concern was mild crowding of the teeth. Her medical history was not significant. Extraorally, the patient had a convex profile with even vertical thirds and horizontal fifths. The patient had lip incompetence with protrusive upper and lower lips to the E-line. She had a consonant smile arc with adequate incisal display. Intraorally, she had permanent dentition with good oral hygiene. Initial presentation was class 2 division 2 malocclusion. The overjet was 3 millimeters and the overbite was 50%. The upper midline was shifted to the right side by 1 millimeter and the lower midline was shifted to the left side by 2 millimeters in relation to the facial midline. There was moderate crowding in both maxillary and mandibular arches. The study models revealed the similar findings as the intraoral photos. In addition, it is seen that the lower left permanent second molar is only partially erupted. The curve of spee was flat and the curve of Wilson was within normal limits, which is not visible from this angle. The initial panoramic radiograph shows almost horizontally impacted lower left permanent mandibular second molar and mesioangular impacted third molar. Mandibular third molars had two thirds of the root development finished. No other significant findings were present. The lateral supplementary radiograph showed that the patient had skeletal class two relationship with a retrognathic mandible. The patient had hyperdivergent mandibular plane angle. The upper incisors were almost normally inclined and positioned. The lower incisors were proclined and protruded. There were three treatment options that were presented to the patient. Option number one was the extraction of both maxillary first premolars and mandibular right first premolar and left second molar along with fixed edgewise appliances to mesialize the mandibular left third molar into the position of mandibular left second molar for substitution. Option number two was to extract both maxillary first premolars, mandibular right first and left second premolars and mandibular third molar. The goal was to mesialize the mandibular first molar to achieve class 1 molars on both the sides. In addition to that, mandibular second molar will be uprighted. Option number 3 was the extraction of maxillary left first premolar and mandibular left second molar. The goal was to substitute mandibular left second molar with the mandibular left third molar. This will most likely not address the protrusion and lip incompetence. If you would like to know more about how this case was treated, please visit PCSO Bulletin 2022 Fall Issue. Thank you for your attention.